Uh, Jeff, with uh, Virginia Tech, your permanent crossover opponent, is there going to be an interest in this game that maybe goes beyond just Saturday night, how you look at them? No, Rich. Every opponent, no. we're going to look out the same way. Um, we got a ton of work to do just improving ourselves. So, you know, we just we just met. I just had a team meeting and um, showed the guys what we need to clean up and show them the pluses, the minuses, and how we need to improve if we're going to continue to win games. And we're going to continue to make it about us. But uh, I'll turn the table here after I get off with you guys and start watching Virginia Tech. We'll go to Julian. So, John, what's going on, Joe? Hey, Julian. Um, just like you just said, you met with them, showed them some things you need to clean up. What were they? Yeah, just it's it's all three phases, right? Um, just showed them some plays on defense where there's a bust here or an MA here or a misassignment here or we're not aligned and showing them how, you know, we show them something in practice and we need to be, over, be able to carry it over to the game, uh, show them some penalties that are totally unexcusable um, that really could have cost us the game. I mean, truthfully, Julian, um, we did a lot of good things. We really did. And our kids played really hard. We also uh, did some did some things we need to clean up. And, you know, truthfully, I think we could have won that game by – it should have never come down to that extra point. And I mean that. And all, all due respect to Pitt and their staff and their team, uh, that game shouldn't have come down to the extra point. And I showed them that. And I showed them why. And I showed them what it looked like. And I told them how we have to improve. And, you know, when you win a game um, – when you win a game, you can look at it two ways. You can just look at the result and be happy. And we are happy, trust me. But you got to look at the process and make sure it's right. And you got to look at the coaching and you got to look at the playing and you got to make sure it's on point, regardless if you win or lose. You got to take that away and watch the film the same way every week. And that's what I do with the players. And as a quick follow, there's a, a couple of coaches say, like, uh, you want to learn and you want to improve, but it's always better to do those things while you, if you can do it and win at the same time. Uh, in that case, like, what have these first four been like in terms of just, yeah, you got room and you got like, there's a lot of room between you and the team's possible ceiling, but you're doing it and you're taking your lumps and you still, you're still winning games, finding ways to win. Yeah, it's, it, it's a sign of a, a mature, resilient, tough team. Um, and, you know, the best sign of a really good team is a team that can, you know, take a win and really look hard at themselves and take the coaching and don't take it personal because we never make it personal. Um, figure out how to get better and don't get caught up in, you know, you know, you played this well and you're reading this and you're reading that. And no, what does the film look like? And can you get better? But yeah, you can. I can get better and I will get better every week. And so will our team. Um, and that's how our coaches are going to coach them. We'll go to Kevin. Hey, Coach, uh, third down coming into the week was obviously, you know, a huge topic of discussion. Uh, looking here, Pitt was 4 of 18 last night. What would you like about third down? Well, I true, I, even those four, Evan, if you look at the four they got, I mean, we should have been all over them. I mean, we had the quarterback running around. We had the edge set. We just – we left some more out there. So, yeah, 4 of 18, you know, you'll, you'll take all day, right? That's really good. And I think our staff and our players did a good job. but but we could have been off the field on even more. And I'm not just saying that because we won. I'm being honest with you when I watched the tape. Um, but really proud of the improvement, big improvement from the North Carolina game on third down. Um, I thought the plan was really, really solid, and the players executed it. Um, and we need to continue. We have to get off the field on third down. It's not easy. We'll go to Andy. Jeff, Pitt has one of the best run defenses in the country, as you mentioned yesterday. You also talked about how you want to improve the run game overall. What do you think can be done? I don't know, have there been discussions about shifting things around on the O-line again? What do you think can be done to get this run game where it needs to be? Yeah, you know, Andy, that, that's a good question. And it's a question you should ask. And I showed about 10 clips to the team today of literally, you know, one guy, an MA here or a missed block here. And, and if you show it and you slow it down, I mean, you're talking about explosives gone out the gate. And, you know, we got to coach it better and we have to execute it better on the field. That was a really good defense. Their D-line is really good. They attack downhill. You saw the safeties. They're basically standing at the line of scrimmage. That's why we hit those explosive passes. But there were still so many yards we left out there, whether it's the tight end here not blocking the right guy or coming off too late on the combo or being too loose at the three technique. Um, I mean, I'm talking about inches away from getting some huge explosives 
So, you know, we're going to keep pushing and pushing and eventually the glass is going to break. Um, but we're not going to get away from it. We just, we need to do it better. We'll go to Dan. Coach, uh, yesterday, Zay Flowers mentioned um, in his, I think the quote that he used was using speed releases and, and talked about the defensive back flipping his hips. Um, but I know I've asked you before about hand checking at the line and, and guys playing tight, but how does a receiver and a defensive back have to know to flip hips or use their legs to, to get turned and when they're in coverage? Well, you want to flip a DB's hips as quickly as you can, right? Because once you flip his hips, you really have a, you have advantage because you usually have leverage. A good DB likes to stay square as long as possible. So you stay square. You don't open up your hips. As soon as if you open up your hips quick, the receiver can get underneath or he can go outside. Zay's probably talking about a speed release, Dan, meaning that, you know, against some of these bigger, long guys, like those corners were huge. You guys probably saw it, big guys. I mean, he was just releasing fast to the outside so they couldn't get their length on him, and he was just running away from them. And when you're up against a bigger, longer DB and you're faster and quicker than them, so they can't get a hold of you, you just use a speed release. You get with speed and you run away, and then you get back and stack them and run your route. Um, and then it's the same thing. If a DB's covering you and he's off and you can flip his hips, then you can kind of – it's hard to recover once you flipped your hips as a DB. Go back to Julian. That's just the match last night. And I was just curious, now that you've had kind of a night to decompress, uh, there have been a few of these ones, whether it's you do this one. Uh, these are stressful <laughs> uh, outcomes um, for, for anybody to watch. But as a coach and as a team, like how are you guys processing just the nature of these games? Is it more – fun do you have to stay locked in do you wish they were all 30 point blowouts like how does it how do you navigate you know like playing these types of games you know well you, you know during the game Julian, you really don't you don't think about it much because you're so locked in and it's just the next play the next play the next play and um i just think it goes back to the way we approach every practice and the way we approach the game um we don't coach tight we don't play tight um we don't yell and scream at the players on the sideline during the game to get them all up tight, whether they drop a ball or have a PI, you know, we want our players to just be loose and play fearless. And I think when you do that and you create the culture, I think when it comes down at the end, I just think you see more energy, more juice, more trust in each other and confidence. Um, but do I wish every game came down to the last play? Uh, not unless you could guarantee me we were going to win all of them because they certainly are exciting at the end. Um, but no, I mean, it's just a credit to our team, Joy. Is that philosophy or is that something else? Got like, you know, uh, getting in, being able to practice and not yell and not be down somebody's throat and not make it more tense than it already is. Yeah, some, well, some teams do that. That's right. That, that's my philosophy. And during practice, yeah, we're going to get on guys hard, right? Like our work week is hard. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday are hard. And we coach hard and we're demanding and we're hard in the meetings but that's our time to coach hard, right? So by the time we get to Saturday, if we coached well, then the work should be done. And now it's time to let the players go play and let us go coach. And I'm not going to sit there and yell at coaches and screw. No, the game plan's done. If we did our job and the process was right, then Saturday should just be go loose and let it rip and play. And we'll correct it on the film. Now we'll correct it. I mean, we work hard during the sideline to correct it and show them and teach them. But you know, unless a guy like jumps off sides or does, I mean, it's, it's not a like, guy like Elijah last night had a few PIs. I've coached a lot of great corners, corners, get PIs, corners go through hard games. I looked at him and I told him I've been around hall of fame guys. They've been through this, shake it off and go get the next one. When Zay dropped the ball, I looked at him and said, Hey man, don't worry. You're going to get another opportunity. That's not the time to get on him for that because I don't want him to get tight. I want them to be loose, calm, relaxed, and play fearless. And if we just start jumping guys throughout the game, they're going to get tight, you know? Good, Andy. Oh, I'll steal Julian's question for this week. Uh, how are Dion and Travis doing? I know they didn't play last night. They're going to practice again today. Um, and just, you know, last week they practiced. We found out late from um, Travis, I didn't find out till Friday morning. Travis practiced Wednesday and Thursday and Dion practiced. And they just felt like it was best as we got closer to the game to keep them out. So I'm very hopeful that they'll both play in this game. They're both going to be out there practicing today. Um, and I'd expect them to practice to, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So I'm hopeful, Eddie, that they'll play this week. Go to Kevin. 
Coach, it's been a while since you guys have had a road trip. Uh, Duke feels like forever ago. Obviously, it's nice to be home for, you know, for this long. Do you feel like the team is ready kind of to get back out on the road and, and take the show, you know, out there? I don't know. You know, I'd, I'd have to ask him. Or you'd have to ask him that question, Kevin, when you get some of the guys. Um, I love playing home. I wish the fans were all here. Don't you guys wish that in these last couple games and these last three games, it would have been fun having the students here and, you know how loud it would have been in the fourth quarters of all three of these games, you know what I mean? Um, UNC coming down to the end, Texas State coming down to the end, and in this last one, I think this place would have been rocking. Um, and definitely would have had some home field advantage if that were the case, but I just think our guys are glad to play football, and it's fun to get on a plane and go be with each other and get to a hotel and be with each other. I told the guys this the other uh, night, I mean, I love when we just get to that hotel and Guys are just hanging out, enjoying the time together, and, and I look forward to doing that wherever we are. We'll take three more first with Andy. Jeff, another great game for Hunter Long. Uh, targeted 10, game, tar 10 times. I think he leads the country of all tight ends with receptions. But he's been taking a beating uh, a couple of weeks now, um, just hitting the turf. And Is there a way you can minimize that harm, or is that just football? I think it's football. I think we got to take care of him in practice. Uh, make sure he feels good going into every game. Um, but the way we're throwing the ball and, and think about it, every target he gets, he's going to get hit. So he's getting a lot of targets. He's going to take a lot of hits. So if, if we don't target him, he probably won't get hit that much, Andy. But I think he'd rather take the targets and take the hits. And, you know, we do a really good job of, of really watching his reps in practice so he feels good on uh, Saturday. Go to Julian. You highlighted uh, last night uh, the, the play caller from Frank Zignetti. Uh And you also mentioned a little bit about the adjustments that uh, Tim made. But can you just sort of expound a little bit on, like, just the job they're able to do? They're, they're, they're creative. They seem like, I guess, the corporate term for it is agile. Like, agile, they can, like, adjust quickly um, to what they have. And, and what kind of an asset is that for you as a coach? Yeah, well, I think – you know, if you look at what Coach Signetti's done without really a spring ball and with a limited training camp with such limited contact, you know, it's, it's tough. I, I still think we're finding out who we are and what we do best. And I think if you guys watch, we're a little bit different every week. Um, you saw the element of tempo jump in this week. Um, you saw us throw the ball a little bit more uh, week three than we did week two and week one. Um, I think we're trying to find out what we do best. And I think the staffs both do a really good job of kind of playing a little cat and mouse and trying to stay ahead of everybody. Um, we came out, we came out in that second half and hit the big play on the second play that they had set up, which was awesome. Um, and then we've been really good in the fourth offense and defense. It's the same thing. Defensively, we're trying to figure out, you know, how they're going to attack us. And then we try to jump ahead and then we try to figure out in the second half, same thing. And I think we've done a really good job, Tim, Frank, and the whole staff of really staying ahead of um of w what's about to happen uh, so it's good film study it's good anticipation and it's good coaching and i th think you'll see it will improve the more we're around each other and we'll wrap things up with dan Coach, brandon sebastian had a half dozen pass breakups plus the interception um what does he just do as a defensive back i feel like you know you have a couple quiet games as a defensive back or it doesn't show up on the stat sheet that's not necessarily a a bad thing if a, if a defensive back doesn't show up as much on the stat sheet? No, it's how I've always measured a DB, especially corner is. I never look at a corner like he played 70 plays and he had 70 pluses, right? Because what you want to look at is opportunities. So what does that mean? So that means as a corner, if there were six balls thrown at you, how many were caught? And if you were four of six and you only caught two, you had a pretty good day. If you were over six, but you did everything else right in the game, you didn't have a good day. So it's almost like a baseball player, Dan. Like, what's your batting average for the game? How many opportunities did you get? How many plays did you make? And that's, to me, that's playing corner. Sebastian, Sebastian was the player of the game for us on defense. I mean, the poise he plays with at the reception point, he finishes violent, he tackled violent. He should have had the interception that he dropped. I think you were thinking that he caught it, but he actually dropped it, Dan. Um, but the guy just... He just plays with a ton of energy. Um, he can run. He's, he's good with the ball in the air. And he had some big plays for us yesterday, both tackling and defending. So but that's how I look at DB, Dan. It's just, if you got five plays, did you make all five, you know? 
And separately from that, just to follow up, if, if he's closing down a guy, how does that have a spillover over effect to guys like Josh DeBerry and, and some of the other guys that are in the that are in the lineup? Well, that depends if the offense is just going to pick a matchup. But, you know, you'd have to really ask – you'd have to look hard at what the offensive coordinator's philosophy was. If, if we're just playing man and they're worried about him, then, yeah, they'll go to the other side of the field. But we mix in so many different zones where it's not like they can just pick on us. Um, you know, but for the most part, I know we, I know we had our issues yesterday with the penalties. We'll clean them up. We've been pretty clean. Um, with all the balls thrown at us this year, we've been pretty clean. Um, and like I said, Dan, sometimes you get into those games where, you know, you just – you get a few called on you and you can't get away from it. You just have to hit the reset button. He's a good player. And I just wanted him to shake it off and, and keep playing fearless. Great. I'll wrap things up for today. Thanks so much, Jeff. All right. Thanks guys. I'll see you Tuesday. Have a great day.